Hi, my name's Fred McNeil, and thank you for watching QAC TV 7. You're wanting to, watching a program called Conversations with Fred. Each week I have people from the community come in and talk about things that you should be aware of and probably events that are going on. The last couple of shows we've been talking education. We've had Chesapeake College president here, superintendent of schools. Now we want to shine the light on Gunston School. And in fairness and advertising, John, I want the public to know I had a wonderful two-year experience coaching out there. I have lots of friends who sent the kids out there, so I know you're doing a wonderful job. We'd like to invite John Lewis. Now, you're not in any relation to John Lewis, the old uh, union person, are you? I'm not. Okay. No, I, I was, or, or the former congressman. Okay. I kept looking at John Lewis. I said, is this man, he's a labor leader, a member of the House of Representatives, all right. John, welcome to the show. Thanks. And yeah, thank you, Kevin. There's a funny story about that. Apparently, please, had, please. John Lewis, John L. Lewis had right. very big, bushy eyebrows. Oh, he had eyebrows that made mine look like nothing, yes. Yeah, and the first, the first thing my mother-in-law said to me when she ever <laughs> met me, she says, he has no eyebrows. <laughs> I'm not sure okay. if the camera can show this. I actually do have eyebrows, but they're, have they're, so, they're so faint. <laughs> well, he had great bushy hair. Yeah, yeah. He had great hair. And when he spoke, you, you had to listen because he would pound the table or whatever. John, yeah. how about we start with that? Most people know about Gunston yep. School, but let's just remind everybody, you're right outside of Centerville, beautiful location, mm -hmm. right? On, on the river there. I mean, I love it, your crew teams, and I guess you have sailing teams or whatever. Just the most beautiful sight it can be. But let the people know about a little bit about John Lewis. Now we know you're not a congressperson or a labor union president. Where'd you come from? Where'd you go to school? And how in the world did you get an education? Um, well, I grew up in Montgomery County. Oh, that's uh, right. Where? where am I going? So, uh, in Rockville. Oh, I, I went to Walt Whitman. Okay. And I grew up right off of, uh, you, you know, River Road and by yeah. the Beltway. Oh, okay, wow. Yeah, so, so I'm out by the, I grew up out near the Shady Grove Metro Station. Oh, wonderful out there. So, yes, yes. Uh, and then I uh, stayed close for college, went to Georgetown. Okay, and, great school. And uh, then spent some time working at boarding schools and then abroad. Okay. And then I, uh, I Where did, were you overseas? Uh, I spent two years helping to found a school in Ecuador. Oh, wow. Uh, that would have been interesting. That was great, actually. Oh, wow. Okay. And, uh, and then went and got my master's at Harvard's Graduate School of Education. Oh, you went to Harvard. Okay. And then my uh, met my bride, my okay. wife, uh, okay. there. And then she the, boss. I, the boss. The boss. The boss. The boss. The um, boss. And then we moved to Singapore for three years. Oh, wow. And so uh, working with schools there? International school. Okay. What was the, at what point, I always tell people, I saw a John Wayne movie where he was a football coach at a small Catholic college. I can't think of it, for who the belt, whatever it was. And that all of a sudden education just, hey, that's why I want to, I want to coach, I want to teach. What was, was there a draw at some point in your life and said, this is what I want to do or what? You know, I, I was a resident assistant in college. Okay. Uh, all right. And mm -hmm. so that was a very, you know, I think I really enjoyed sort of, watching kids develop okay. and being kind of part of that process. And then I had a, a, a professor when I was there, uh, an English professor, I was an English mm -hmm. major, and he All said, right. you know what you should do when you graduate? Teach, you should, teach. You should, go, you should go coach baseball and, oh, you're a baseball and teach, guy. Shakespeare, teach Shakespeare. Did yeah. you play at Georgetown? I played, I played at Georgetown for a year and a half. Did you really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, okay. So, so it was, in the, it was a college experience working as a graduate assistant and uh, an RA or whatever that, hey, this education thing might not be a bad gig, right? So I got an internship at a boarding school, and okay. you know when you're there, it's one of those th one of those jobs where you're living in the dorm, uh, you're never teaching ends. classes, never you're ends. coaching three sports, yes. and um, there were eleven of us, and you know half of us are still in education, and the other okay. half uh, <laughs> never went to law school. They didn't know, uh, right. so, uh, and I just really liked the process of you know not just working in the day to day w with kids, but then um, just became interested in sort of the school a as an ecosystem, okay. which has kind of led me to different leadership roles. Over the okay. years. Okay. What positions did you play in baseball? I was a catcher. Oh, you're a catcher. So was I. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Right-handed, probably. Yes. And okay. My problem was uh, I and messed everything. Light hitting. It's important. Well, to mention I that. look. I couldn't hit a curveball, a fastball, uh, lacrosse, and cross country were beginning to look good at some point <laughs> in my career. Uh, did you play? And you actually played uh, Georgetown for a year and a half. I did. College baseball was. I used to walk up. And, uh, John and I know American University on the other side of town. I would go up and watch their games played right behind the campus there in college baseball. Uh, baseball is still my favorite. Are you still follow baseball? Or I not? do. Oh, I do. You have a team? I'm, I'm an Orioles fan. Oh, Lord, I'm a Nationals. We're both in last place. So, we? yeah, no, it's uh, long suffering, unfortunately. <laughs> of course, when I grew up, they were amazing. Uh, yes, yes. So. Yeah. I grew up in Washington, D.C., about, uh, well, you grew up in Rockville, like you said. I grew up in the Bethesda area. Washington, what was the saying? Washington, D.C., first in war, first in peace, last, last in, in the America. AL East, yeah. and now it's last in the NL East. So, John, it doesn't, it doesn't. So, you, you went overseas, you, you were getting involved in schools. Now, tell us a little about the Gunston thing. First of all, are you back? 
We're back. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, so COVID, back. okay, tell us about In that. In person, uh, we were back last year. Oh, okay. Uh, we spent probably 90% of the year on campus. Oh, good, um, good. And, uh, you know, Gunston is a, an institution here in Centerville. We're, oh, this is our hundred. There's generations of people walking yeah. around. I see on Facebook, yeah, I went there in 19, whenever, whenever, right? Yeah, so we're 111, this is our 111th year. Oh, it's 111th. Congratulations. And thanks, and it's our 25th year as a co-ed day school. Right. So. And again, in fairness, I had the pleasure of the first, I guess maybe the second time Gunston went co-ed. Was, was, was Gunston not co-ed? 50s, 40s, or am I wrong? Long, long time ago, okay. more like in the 20s, oh, 20s. it was co-ed. Okay. And right. then we had some co-ed students kind of in the 40s and 50s, but okay. a smattering. Um, but really, really from the sort of 1930s to the mid-90s, it was an all-girls boarding school. And many of the young ladies lived on campus, mm -hmm. right? And because I'd see them walking through town. Uh, I had the pleasure, I was, I was saying, of uh, coaching two years uh, when you went co-ed. And the kids were wonderful. Anita Ress, who was the AD. Mm -hmm. And I forget Stick's real name, who was the headmaster. He was delightful because he supported sports or any activities kids liked. Right, Peter Sturdivant was his Peter name. Peter Sturdivant, thank you. Yeah. Okay, and he was terrific and very supportive. Now, Gunston today, you've told me, is growing and, 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 uh, and we're getting bigger. We have grown. So we've, yeah. we've grown um, you know, about 70% over the past 10 years. And okay. so we opened this year at 235 students. That's a good size class. Yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah, we're good. We're full. Um, and is that now, is that 9, 10, 11, 12? What are the grades? High school only. So it's starting, uh, starting in ninth grade. Okay. So we, we, you know, we welcome about 62 students this year from about 22 different schools okay. in our ninth grade. Um, and now, then, most of the students from Queen Anne's County, are you, are you getting like it used to be, Anne Arundel County, everywhere? Yeah, it's uh, about, around the country, around the world. It's about 20% from Anne Arundel, um, okay. a small number from Middletown, Delaware, and Dover, okay. and then okay. sort of the, the about you know, 75% from the midshore. And, okay. and it's, it's sort of equally distributed between Queen Anne's, Talbot, and Kent. And a beautiful location. I mean, I, I, used, to, I used to live in the community uh, right next door, and my morning runs would be, it was three miles from my house, go around your circle, I guess it's still there, yep. the entrance circle, and get back, and just beautiful. The deer, just a quiet, beautiful campus. Yeah, it's a, it's a great legacy that was left to us for the founders. You know, it's a 35-acre waterfront campus. It's... Um, yeah, you know, it's a great place for kids, uh, and I think our alumni talk a lot about it. Just, just what it's oh, like to be it's on just, that in that space for four years. I mean, the aesthetics have been just. Be, tell me a little bit now. Here we are. We're after Labor Day. Is it? Let's talk about the 21, 2021, 22 school year. First of all, can you still go to Gunston at this point? I mean, if someone says, "Hey, I'm hearing this Lewis guy. He sounds like a pretty good guy in a good location." Is it too late this year, or what's the process if I want to go to Gunston? Yeah, it, it's too late for this year. Okay, so, so this are, year is off the map. Yeah, we are full with a waiting list. Okay. Um, um, but if you're a family in eighth grade or, or ninth or tenth grade, um, what you would do is just call our admissions office, and okay. uh, there's an inquiry process. We have open houses, which are on our website. Uh, the dates for those, and then um, our director of admissions would, you know, any. Is family, Anita Gress still there? Uh, Not she, Anita Gress. Uh, uh -uh. Who used to be your? I'll think of the moment. I'm, I apologize. David Henry is our director of admissions. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Okay, all right. Uh, and so you know, he will give a family a campus tour, and then we have uh, a shadow day for prospective students. And uh, so that would be for the 20, it's hard to even think about this, the 22, 23 school year. Okay, it's going to come quick. I'm going to warn you, John. It is, okay. it is. No, I actually have a, it's really funny, I have an eighth grade daughter. Who, oh, who is, is she going to go next Who year? is inquiring, well, as, oh. I, as I tell her, if she gets in. <laughs> so. right. Dad has the final <laughs> say on this one. Wash the dishes, I have to, you know, clean I, up. I, uh, I've, I'm, I'm off the admissions committee for that oh, while. That was a smart move, John. So, Keep it sad. Yeah. Now, so if we want to, the starting point as we watch the show and people watch it, if they say, you know, I'd like to know more about the guns, then go to your website. That'd be mm -hmm. step one. What is it? Is it just gunstonschool.com? It's gunston.org. Um, org. Okay. And then, you know, we've got great social media, too. So they're, okay. you know, Facebook, Instagram. And now we'll put them in the direction for how do I get in touch for, to start this uh, process to get into school. The website will do that. Okay. So if okay. you go on the website, then there's a tab that says okay. apply. And then it will give you the information about inquiring, visits, uh, recommendations, all the things that you need to okay. do. Okay, it'll to, guide you through it. Right. Okay, which you get. Now, if someone's asking, well, uh, Mr. Lewis, why should I go to get, what are the selling points? We all, we know the physical beauty. We'll take that off the table. That's beautiful. How about in terms of academics, extracurriculars? Talk about that a bit. So, I mean, I think, 
you know, there's sort of three things that define the school. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, I think one is the academic program. You know, we're a college preparatory institution. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, 100% of our students go to college. And I think we take a lot of pride 100%? In, is that what you said? Correct. I almost fell out of my chair. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, yeah. And so, you know, we take a lot of pride in, in, in preparing students right. uh, for, for college, you know, not just to get in, but to be successful when they're there. Uh, the other uh, kind of parts of the experience is just as a small school, you know, 235 students, it's an incredibly nurturing... What's class size, John? No, we said um, one you know, to five, one to ten. You know, classes could be anywhere from, say, eight to 15 students. Oh, so very small. Um, Everyone knows everybody's name. There's a lot of involvement. Right, right. So as head, I, you yeah. know, I know all the students and all sure. the parents and some of the grandparents. Okay. It's just, so it's a... I think it's a it's a nurturing and warm community. It's very personal and caring. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I think you know the, the other parts are those sort of extra, the the extracurricular program as well. So our, we have a two. What sport. do we have? Yeah, what do we have? So we have um, an athletics program. So we have mm-hmm. a two. We do not do physical education. We have a two sport requirement. Okay. And so you know we have fall, winter, and spring. Oh, so everyone's got to do two sports athletics, through the year. Okay. Correct. Uh, and then you know we have a, a wonderful performing arts program, a great visual arts program. Uh, you know. Clubs ranging from you know Model UN to Quiz Bowl to community service, and so I think for us it's a it, it's really trying to develop the whole child. It's a full plate of activities for kids, right? And uh, and then, but I think and, and just as importantly is to help students develop a sense of ownership over their academics, and and it's our hope that that students you know stay inspired uh, for learning. You know, they really continue to love learning their whole experience there and when they when they go off they they have a good sense of who they are as people sure. well i know one of your graduates who remain nameless who is uh, at the university of south carolina her grandmother says you've fully prepared her she feels very comfortable with right. the academics I, like we were laughing off air the biggest challenge she's faced so far is how do i get through the sorority rush week and we don't you don't, you don't get that. involved no. in that one now uh, okay. no that's i mean that's that's a essentially a universal sentiment for our students you know they feel in some ways you know they'll, they'll tell us their first year of college yeah. was harder than their last their junior year at gunston okay. um, and so i think that's and and i think that's a you know, there there's a big dropout rate. You know, in that first oh. one or two years of college, yeah, the toughest years. I yeah. think students they just don't you know, they don't really learn how to write. They don't they don't really learn how to kind of manage their yeah. time and and do some of those things. The that, hardest thing at college, I don't know how you feel as a headmaster, John, is all of a sudden you go from a very strict schedule from eight to four or eight to three or nine to three. All of a sudden, hey, I might have a class at eight. I might have one at one. I might have one in the evening. You've got to do exactly what you said, time management and yeah. when to study and when to play, right? And that's, yeah. Hopefully that's what you're providing your kids with, how to, how to juggle that whole process, right. which is difficult, right? And that's, like you say, so many of them drop out. That's crazy. Now, let's just go, we'll do one thing at a time. Uh, and your extracurriculars, in the fall, there's a chance for boys and girls to play soccer and field hockey, or is it, what did you tell so me? So we have, and uh, forgive me if I forget one of these. Don't but, worry about um, it. So probably, uh, so about 40% of our students do waterfront athletics. Okay. So that's uh, sailing, sailing and rowing. And, rowing. Okay. and you have uh, so a the, wonderful rowing program. We do, we do. That's a yeah. really unique uh, sport. We have uh, boys soccer okay. and girls soccer. All right. Um, we have girls field hockey. Uh, we have girls... Um, uh, volleyball, okay, uh, and that's actually a new sport this year okay. that we have. Right. Uh, we have golf, uh, both for boys. So plenty and for of fall sports. It and sounds like yeah. both boys and girls cross country. Okay, okay, and then we go to winter. We do basketball, boys and girls. Yeah, winter is um, basketball. We have a, a like a futsal program, which is uh, kind of an outdoor. We do soccer, kind of outdoor on the, on the oh, tennis okay. courts. Oh, that'd so be fun. Yeah, it's a, be like fun. a little bit like a frigid, uh, frigid <laughs> futsal. You can do uh, that when you're yeah. young. Not and then we have job. a uh, rowing fitness program. Oh, in, so they the pra- they they're conditioning off season type thing. Yeah. They're on the concept too, rowing or jogging or whatever they're doing and then we go to spring we have spring you have uh boys and girls across okay uh, you have rowing and sailing uh, okay. we have a triathlon team uh, oh, you have a well, triathlon which is, team. And, oh, wow. uh, uh, we're state champions in triathlon. In the triathlon. So the last oh, wow. couple of years. Uh, is there a con- Correct. It's a lot of people saying, well, I know if my kid goes to Queen Anne's County, they're going to be in a, a Bayside Conference. Are you involved in a conference in athletics? Is so there- we're in the Eastern Shore Independent Athletic okay, Conference. Okay, so the private schools on the shore. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then we play a lot of games against Western Shore private schools as okay. well. Key school. Indian. So there's a regular schedule yeah. and a regular, probably playing for cups and championships and yeah. all types of good stuff. Yeah. All right, well, that's exciting. Now, how about, let's go back, let's get away from sports a little bit. Uh, theater and different clubs, the hiking, I don't know, tell me what other type of clubs. So, um, well, we have a, a huge range of clubs. I mean, you mentioned, 
sort of hiking and things like that. Okay. So I, kind of another feature of the program is our commitment to environmental teaching and learning. So right. we've got, um, it's not a club, but we have a program called Chesapeake-Based Studies, oh, great. which is so every week in the spring, the students do a week of environmental education. Oh, um, and so they go out yeah. into the bay and it's all experiential. Okay. Uh, and You learn by doing. You learn by doing. Learn so by it's doing. a, you know, ninth grade, it's essentially Chesapeake Bay 101. So they, usually it's a program with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. And then students take different electives. Um, they do a climate science elective, that's required. Mm -hmm. um, we do some comparative watershed trips. We've taken kids to New Orleans oh, and wow. uh, up, to, up to Rhode Island and to so get around. North get Carolina. Around. Yeah, so it's a, that's a great part of the program. Uh, no, the clubs really, I mean, the clubs range, I mean, if you have an interest, we have it. You've got to start a club. It's, it's Somebody, it's, yeah. and, we, and actually, that happens every year. You know, we have a... Some, we, someone says, can you start this? And we faculty have a, a member. garden club uh, oh, starting this year. We've got, um, we had a chess club for a while, then sort of sort of faded, Fizzled but out, it's yeah. back. So okay. Our chess club is back. We've got, um, and I mentioned some of, them, uh, some of them earlier, we've got a, a science, technology, and engineering club. Okay. Um, and so that's a part of our really robust robotics program that we have that's both part of a class and part of a club and then part of a sort of an external competition network that we're oh, involved wow. with. In robots competing against robots or whatever. It's great. No, it's oh, really, it's and uh, I mean, the, these students are, are at school. Oh, it's amazing what they both build Both days on the weekends oh, and um, it, it's pretty amazing what they have to do to put the physical robot together to do the programming, to navigate the challenges that the competition has. Um, it's It's a... So and you, you and it's, if you want it, if a student wants it, you probably develop it, right? Or help them get a club, and get it going. Yeah, and I think one of the great things about being at a, at a small private school is, you know, your teachers will seek you out. Right. Um, right. You know, you're, you, I mean, students join clubs, but I think yeah. we really need every student to be involved so that we can have a robust program. So I coach the academic quiz bowl team, so oh, I'm constantly really? out there recruiting you know, students <laughs> to, right. to be I part was of a cross-country coach in basketball because tall guys, you're playing basketball. <laughs> exactly. You did what in gym? You're a runner. Okay. So... Oh, which is good. Now, let's talk about faculty and support. Uh, you've talked about wonderful, everyone's going to college. How about uh, counseling? Is there counseling services, a counselor, counselors? How's that all work? So uh, we have a kind of a comprehensive advising program. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you're a new family, you meet with our assistant head um, who puts together a really uh, comprehensive schedule for okay. you. Uh, and it's really a four-year program for every child. And then um, you are assigned an advisor. Okay. Um, and if we need, if there are counseling needs that we typically contract with outside counselors, okay. um, we have an academic learning center. So if students need um, different extra kind help of or academic support, or they okay. need extra time for testing, or um, you know, we have a, a percentage of students who have um, different different learning challenges here and there. We're able to accommodate those through our academic learning center. Okay. How about the, the faculty itself? What, who do you have? You have uh, you used to have the Everdales there. You used to have. Right. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, the Everdales. I think live there, shop. I'm, I'm, I mean, talk talk a little about if you can brag on your faculty. Yeah, I mean, bit, I think the like. faculty is what makes the school. Sure. Of and, course. Uh, you know, I have a I have a saying of. Um, I went to a large public high school in Montgomery County. Sure. I got a great education. Where'd you I, go to high school? Uh, by I way, went to man. Magruder. Oh, sure. Great um, school. And I got a great education. I had some great teachers. Mm -hmm. um, but, it, you know, the, I have a, a saying that it, it takes, it only takes one teacher to oh. transform your life. Yes. You know, you... And we all have one. We've all had that person. Yes. And, I, and I feel like Gunston is, is a place where, you know, every teacher is like that teacher. Okay. Um, and I think our teachers are incredibly student How many faculty members do you have, John? Um, that's a good question. Ballpark, ballpark. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of high 30s okay. is the current that's number. That's a good size. That's um, a good size. You know, between full and part-time, that's a that number varies a little bit. But, okay. um, you know, it's, you know I, I, I see my role as head of school really as being the, the primary supporter of our faculty right. and, and trying to... You're the cheerleader, you know. And, and yeah. to make sure that we have a really strong faculty because, you know, it's, you know my, my hope is that as students go from class to class to class, you know, they're getting really high-quality teaching from really caring and devoted people. And it's... Um, it, it, it is a pleasure every day to be working okay. with the Gunson faculty, and especially last year. I mean, people, tough last year, year was tough very year. stressful, I think, for... Well, look, I've asked this, of, and I'm, excuse me for interrupting you. Sure. Uh, I've asked this of everyone from Chesapeake College to the superintendent of schools here. How did, the, how did teachers make it through last year? I mean, how, as a headmaster, I mean, I don't know, you, you had kids there. But with COVID going on and all the disruption in daily lives, school lives, how did they make it? One day at a time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and that's the answer everybody yeah, I mean, says. I think that's yeah. how, I mean, I think yeah. we were, so we, um, you know, we, we pivoted, I think, pretty fast. Um, you know, we're fortunate to have had a pretty... Were you, in, were you on campus the whole time? So we were, out? we essentially lost the spring of okay. 2020. 
20. Uh -huh. um, uh, but then our faculty, you know, they worked during the summer and we did a bunch of what we called upskilling, you okay. know, with different types Don't of forget, okay. uh, instructional technology. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we were, like I said, we were on campus about 90% of the year okay. last year. But we had some students who were concurrent. Were you doing virtual too? Or? Um, no. We had some students who were virtual. Okay. Uh, and then we had, if students had to quarantine, for instance, like they would, that we would get, provide virtual instruction for them. Uh -huh. And, okay. you know, our faculty just, I mean, they just hung in there the whole year. And I think- It was a survival thing, wasn't it? it, it I think, and, and I think people leaned on each other to, to navigate through the Good. year and, um, you know- Did you I, lose many faculty? And people just, I, don't, and I know my wife who's is in her 30 yep. years anyway, a lot of her friends, teachers were saying, I love the teaching, I love education. This year wore me out. I mean, I, it just wore me out. Yeah, we've had, we had some retirements this year and, okay. some, and some other transitions. Some natural attrition, um, yeah. But, uh, but no, it was, you know, people were, it was, yeah, I, 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 it I was don't, interesting, I don't want to go through that again. No, no, okay. So. <laughs> well, let me ask you, how about now, how are we doing, did you, school has started at Gunson, correct? Yep. How we do, I mean, how do the, the kids just like, hey, it's another school year, are we? I mean, one of the comments I've heard from some of the guests is, you know, Fred, we're retraining students again. We've had students who forgot how to, elementary kids how to line up. 300 yep. of you eat together, you have to behave. And now we have in the public schools, and I'll ask this in a second, you're gonna wear a mask on the bus when you're in school, we're gonna give you mask press, but they're the rules. How are we, how are the kids doing with all that? Or how are you doing with all well, that? Well, you know, it feel, the school year feels more normal this okay, year. Okay. I think, um, that's a good sign. I don't, I don't think the masks were the issue. I think for us it was the distancing. You know, you're trying to six keep students, six, six, keeping six feet apart is a, Adolescents, like, no. Yeah, yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. So um, I think being able to have students within three feet of each other, um, yeah. And then I also think just as a culture, we're, we're learning to live with uh, COVID. Yes. Not, uh, you know, we're not, we're out of sort of the shutdown stage. Yeah. We're completely. back, we just have to be careful. Yeah, and, and so I think, you know, this year feels normal, but, but I agree we have, you know, what's in, like I said, we have students from uh, 22 different schools, mm -hmm. you know, who are in our ninth grade. And let me tell you, I mean, I think those students had, a, we're seeing this year, just a lot more variation in preparation, okay. right? And so, okay. um, I mean, even this happened last year where it, it was just clear to us for last year's ninth graders that some of them, you know, like they missed the last three months of pre-algebra. My grandchildren lost 14 months of, 14 months of instruction. Right. And so. That's, that's tough. And so I think we're seeing just having to do a little bit more kind of academic um, alignment this year than we've had to do in previous years. But yes, yeah, it's great to have kids back. I mean, we're doing our athletic program. We've got the academic program going. We've got clubs. Um, you know, we're able to have more students in a particular it's classroom. It's nice to drive so. by the local high school's parking yeah. lot and see it full. Well, it's funny. This year during our new student orientation, okay. or we, had a, we have a student leadership orientation mm -hmm. as well, and there's this noise that, they, that students make when they're sure. joyful and happy yeah. and engaged. And I felt like that noise wasn't there last year. No. You know, I felt no. like that. There was something about last year. It was that, missing, wasn't it? And it was that, missing. And I think our students got to go to school, which I think was good for them. Yes, it was. Um, you know, much better than being online. But there was still something kind of energy sucking about last year that, yeah. that was painful. Adults and children. Yeah. Is Gunson currently under any uh, guidelines in terms of mass on buses and in school or distancing? I mean, is it, are there, do you have to, public schools have been very, they made it very clear. You will wear a mask. Yeah, we have yeah. a we have a mask requirement. Oh, um, so the kids and, are wearing masks. And then and transportation, that's a federal requirement to, right, to wear right. on transportation. So there's no, no local decision on that whatsoever. Right. No. So um, I would say that you know there's lots of little mitigation things that we're doing, but the mm -hmm. main one is is the mask. Okay, and that's going and that's going well. It's not a problem. No, no. no. I think students are habituated to that, and also that actually is one of the nice things about Gunston is that so much of our campus is out. You know, you oh, can yeah. be outdoors. All that fresh air. Right? All this space for kids to be outside, and so you know, what students are doing now. And we have a, we have a couple of tents that we put up oh, um, for outside. outdoors. And so okay. if the weather's even remotely nice, you know, the students are out, you know, outside so under, the under the tent. So they're under the tent. And right. they're, and I think well, that's the other big change this year is that essentially you can be unmasked outdoors. Good. Um, whereas last year, if you were indoors, excuse me, if you were outdoors, you still had to be masked had to mask. in certain situations. Well, the Boston schools back in the pandemic, uh, 1917 or 18, even in the dead of a Boston winter, they were outside or the windows yeah, I've seen those pictures. You've seen those pictures. <laughs> yeah. So an idea of a tent is great, right? And yeah. Especially in Maryland when you have September and October, which are glorious months. Yeah. Why the heck not, right? And I think you're right. I think there's a, 
Uh, and you're, you're confirming what if everyone from the president of Chesapeake College or superintendent schools, a little joy is returned. Yeah, I think athletic absolutely. fields, hearing cheerleaders or athletes or people fussing and yelling, which is good. And even the, I think the idea of eating lunch, all of a sudden there's a room full of chatter, chatter, chatter. That, that's good. That's, and the, yeah. young, the young ones that are adapting to the mask, I don't know what you're finding, they're adapting much easier than the adults are. Yeah, kids are resilient. Yes. You know, and uh, you know, they're going to find a way to socialize with or without a mask. Yes. So I want to be uh, with my friends, right? Well, that's so important. John, let me ask you this. This is not to say, I mean, I'm hoping that we can, you know, get rid of masks. That, we all I mean, I don't, I don't think anybody yeah. wants to be masked no. forever. It's so. getting old, but you know what? It might be something we live with, and you educators are doing a great job. Like I say, I, my hats, as a retired educator of 40 years, my hat's off. I'm not sure us old guys could do what you, you guys are doing in terms of adjusting yeah. to federal regulations. Hey, you're going to wear a, that mask on the bus. No, we're not going to discuss that, right? to the, the vaccination. You've, you're dealing with questions that I never had to deal with. Yeah. Polio shot, there's no question. Line up, take your sugar cube with a pill and, and take it. You got it made. Let me ask you, John, as we get, we've got school going again, do you have any events coming up uh, end of September, October that you'd like the public to know about? Well, uh, you know, we have a whole slew of athletic events. Okay, so, now yeah, they can to get those dates sort of and times online. All on our calendar. Okay. Um, if you go to gunsonsports.com, all those events are there. Um, okay. We have our annual uh, sort of fundraiser and alumni event called the Bull and Oyster Roast. Okay, talk um, about that for a second. That's in October. We have it outside oh, and under and a It tent. sounds like it's, it's um, beef and oysters, is that Yeah, it's a couple hundred people, and it, there's oh, wow. a silent auction and a live auction. And now they used to have sport. Do they still play like a boys and girls soccer game that day, or is that no? Uh, uh, that's a sort of part of the whole weekend activity okay, so we, that we do. Right. Okay. Um, and so those are the those are the sort of big ones. So we can doing. go online and get those dates. And is that a good time for people who might be interested in guns to come or not? I do encourage. Or yeah, I mean that's a community event. Okay. Uh, and so, so that's open to anybody. People would like to come, or okay. I mean, a lot of times, you know, we have um, friends of the. I mean, if if you have a. a, a a, a friend whose child is at Gunston, or right. a relative, or a grandparent. Um, you know, it's the kind. It's the kind of event where you could just tag along. You're okay. not going to feel. And get a, of, get a feel for Gunston and the facilities and uh, everything. It's, yeah. a, it's a big event. It supports the school, of course. Okay. Is now let me ask you, uh, and I ask everybody, if people would like, they say this, you know, I like the idea of private education. Can they contribute money? Are you looking for volunteers? Or do you need? Does Gunston have a list of things they need? Whether it's volunteers or hey, I'd like to. Uh, we just had people from the Churchill Theater talking about, hey, you can buy a seat for three hundred dollars. You're looking for anything in financial help or anything at all as a school? Yeah, I think you know our relationship with the community is, um, uh, you know, we have a lot of different partnerships. Um, you know, with the YMCA, uh, okay. we have a YMCA summer camp on our campus. Mm -hmm. The Horizons program is on our campus in the summer. Those are both worthy programs that deserve support. We'll of course be grateful for any you know <laughs> financial contribution. You're not going to send a check back, right? <laughs> to uh, to the school. You know, we okay. have outside coaches, um, okay. and, and I would say you know probably every couple of weeks someone will reach out to me and say, hey, I'm interested in this, or yeah. I'd happy be happy to you know be engaged with students in this. And and sometimes we can accommodate that, and and sometimes we can't. Okay. Now that's review. We just got a couple minutes left. Sure. If I'm interested in Gunson School after watching this show, or I've been thinking my my son or daughter is in eighth grade, you know, I've got to start planning for this. Best step is go to the website. Okay. Then you have a whole uh, missions process, and the website has a tab. will help guide you through that. Right. Okay. And then, and then people will just come out and talk to you about visitations and different events like that. The Please. other thing, um, so yes, um, mm -hmm. the other thing that I want to draw your attention to Please. is our Chesapeake Watershed Semester oh, sorry. Go, program. Go. Yeah. Um, and so that is, um, if you think, think about a college study abroad, right. um, there are uh, some programs in, in for high school students where essentially you would leave your sending school for okay. a semester, kind of study abroad in this program. And our Chesapeake Watershed Semester program is uh, focuses on environmental science and oh, public wow. policy. Is this open for public and private school um, kids? So, so this oh. year we actually have um, some students from Queen Anne's oh, County High good. School oh, terrific. who are essentially have come to, come to this program called the Watershed Semester oh, uh, during their Queen Anne's High School now, Can career. you still apply for that? Or, um, or no? uh, for the spring. There's actually the a spring, spring semester okay. If, okay. if students are interested. And again, online? Online. Online. That will help uh, you out. And that's at ChesapeakeWatershedSemester.org. Okay. Uh, there's a link on our website to that. Open to public and private schools. Correct. Uh, ninth through 12th graders? Or is there uh, uh, that, that is actually mostly for juniors and seniors. For juniors, so the, uh, the older students, yeah. you'd like to have that type of group. So it's an opportunity for students to sort of step away from uh, their Something school different. Yeah, and, it's great. You know, go on these. We have five expeditions that go kind of all through the watershed, and um, students do a real deep dive. And like I said, 
public policy and environmental science, but they also can do foreign language and math. So, so when you go back to your school, you haven't sort of lost the semester. No, okay. You've, and, 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 and what a great program on the Chesapeake Bay doing oh, it's, different it's activities. Really, Come it's on. great. It's, and it, and it's in its third year. Oh, it's um, but no, it's a very straightforward program. I, mean, I think you know, the best thing to do is just email our director of admissions, David Henry. You know, we're a small school, so we try to personalize the process. Okay. Um, you know, his his goal is to get to know, you know, you know the applicants sure. and, the, and the family. See if they're going to fit. Um, See if it works. So that when that student comes to visit, we can make sure they have a visit that he really shows and showcases the things that they're interested in. And then um, you know, students submit their transcripts and some recommendations. Uh, and and then our admissions committee goes to work. Okay. Okay. Last question. Where do you see Gunston five or ten years from now? Are we going to continue to grow? Or are you, if you top, you, you're happy with the number? What, what do you What do you think? You get the magic wand time here. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a great question. I, you know, we've we've changed so much over the years, uh, of course. and you know, we've have, have grown, um, and we're at a place now where kind of our facility and our pro, our, our 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 enrollment and our facility isn't quite aligned. Okay. Um, and so, you know, we've got some academic building renovations and process, some athletic and some arts building renovations. And I think what will happen over the next 10 years is we're going to kind of build out our campus to the point where really it, 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 it matches the quality of our students. Okay. And so um, get, is, that would likely mean uh, uh, some growth in enrollment. Okay. Is there a magic, last question, I promise you, is there a magic, I mean, one day does Gunson want to be 500 students, so that's not, I mean, is there a magic, no. Right? Yeah, I think 500 is, you know, that's I, too many. Yeah, too I many. think, okay. um, you know, 250 to 300 perhaps would be a, that's a good That's school, um, and that way you can keep it small and get the environment you want. Right? I mean, I think that's part of our DNA is that, that small school feel, okay. and I think there's a point where you, you can get too big. All right. Well, look, thank you for joining us. I know you, this, this must be a busy yeah, week for you invitation. guys. Yeah. And Gunson has an invitation anytime you have a special event or a sporting event you'd like to publicize. Please come. We'd love to have Bring some students one day. We'd love to talk to them you do and that. let everybody know, hey, you've got a local school here. 100% are going on to college. And you have all types of clubs and activities. And uh, most important thing, fingers crossed, I want you to hope everybody have a wonderful 2021, 22 wow. school year. After last year, I think we're due, aren't we? I do. I right. think, and I think it's good to be good to be back. And I'm optimistic that we're going to, I don't say normal, but I think get back to okay. something that looks like normal. And as two guys who love baseball, I'm optimistic that my Nationals and your Orioles are going to leave the cellar of their respective yeah, leagues. I figured if the Orioles had the first pick in the draft for 10 straight years, they, they got to get have better. To be they good got... someday, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> well, look, again, good luck and thanks for coming today. All right, All right, John, thank all right. you, Fred. I'm Fred McNeil. You've been watching QAC TV 7. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. My time's up, and we're going to see you next time.